Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Investing Across Borders, the podcast where we teach you how to invest, live, work, and play across borders. I'm your host, Lauren Cohen, here in South Florida, originally from Toronto, Canada, and I am an international legal and real estate expert. I'm here today with my guest, Anne Liebgott, and Anne was originally born in Vancouver, on the other side of Canada, but she now lives in Switzerland. She has three homes in Europe, and she has literally been all over the world. She's a global nomad, and she helps people achieve more wealth by creating financing structures, mainly for Americans, but also for Canadians that have wealth in Switzerland. Is that correct, Anne? That's right. Okay, great. Well, welcome to the show, and thanks for taking some time. I know the first time we were supposed to be scheduled, unfortunately, I got hit with a migraine. But um, tell us about you and, and how things are over there on the other side of the world and, and how things are going and what exactly you do. Okay, thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, like you mentioned, I was born in Canada. I um, grew up uh, in Vancouver, in Toronto. Um, as a teenager, moved down to the United States, uh, lived outside of Chicago for three and a half years. Uh, came over to Switzerland and decided to stay, decided not to go back to the US. It was an easy decision because my parents are both originally from Denmark and we always had a very uh, European style lifestyle at home. We spent all of our summer vacations uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for me, it was a natural to, to stay and live abroad. And Switzerland is just an absolute perfect destination. It's in the middle of Europe. Uh, we have Germany, France, Italy, uh, right as our neighbors. We have Spain is just a stone's throw basically. And uh, it's just a great, great place to be actually. Um, especially now uh, when we have what I like to call the pandemania, uh, Switzerland has been recognized as the world's most resilient country to mm. be able to handle the aftermath, especially the aftermath of, of the, the coronavirus. Mess. So we feel pretty lucky. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, certainly living in America, I can't say the same. And um, my family is all in Canada and my brother and sister-in-law and the kids just went through um, coronavirus. They all were positive. Thank God they were fine, but it's just not very fun. And here in the US, we're just desperately waiting to get vaccinated if that's available. And it's just been a real, a real mess. So what brought you into the world of wealth? I, I assume it was just natural because you were, have been all over the world, right? Uh, well, what brought me specifically into the world of wealth as far as the Swiss directory AW Switzerland is concerned, which I founded uh, about six years ago, uh, that was I was having um, a lot of conversations with, uh, with Americans who were interested in holding a portion of their assets outside of the US. And uh, Switzerland being the global leader for cross-border wealth management was a natural destination mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to hold a portion of one's assets. And the problem was, was how to get started in Switzerland. Like what banks to go to, what wealth managers to use, how to get started. Uh, should it be a independent wealth manager? Should it be a bank uh, affiliate and so on and so forth? So I actually decided to write a book on the subject because I've written books before. Mm -hmm. And as I was writing the outline of the book, um, I thought, hey, come on, in this day and age, you don't write a book, you put it on, you make an online platform, you know, you put something online so people can access it 24 seven, uh, you can adjust it to all, you know, news and uh, new companies and new banks and new uh, legal and compliance uh, developments and so on. And so the platform AW Switzerland was born. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what, what types of companies are featured in this directory? Uh, this directory, well, the core of the directory are actually the Swiss SEC registered investment advisors that uh, got registered with the SEC, uh, particularly to serve US clients without restrictions. And of course, there's some of them, they also have the proper licensing and exceptions in Canada, so they can also serve US clients as well. Now, mm -hmm. these SEC registered investment advisors, they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, some of them are, you know, large banks in Switzerland that have a, their U.S. affiliate. Some are larger uh, independent wealth managers. Um, others are smaller boutique style companies and all the way down to the one man show. Wow. wow. 
And how did you actually get them to participate in the directory? Like what, what, what steps did you take in order to get them to participate? I guess they wanted exposure and that's how you connected with them, right? Yeah, but to be perfectly honest, when I launched the platform, like I said, going back six years ago, I didn't ask anybody anything. It was actually kind of like a secret project. It was actually intended to be kind of like a hobby thing on the side. Mm -hmm. So I um, just put them all on, the ones that were there at that time. There was like less than 30. Now there are around 50 of them. And um, I made the platform, put it online, and the Wall Street Journal picked up on it right away. And when the Wall Street Journal picked up on it right away, then um, so did a lot of others. And so this uh, kind of like baby project uh, turned into a teenager overnight. Yeah. And um, yeah. And then other things were added, you know, like trust advisors, um, U.S. tax advisors, um, citizenship and, re and residency planning uh, and other kind of like wealth management related subjects. They were added then to the platform. And then a couple years down the road, there was also a spin-off, which is called Americans Welcome Dash Expats. It's actually for expats that are living and working in Switzerland. I see. Only in Switzerland, nowhere else at the moment. Uh, well, since Switzerland is a hub uh, in the financial world, uh, the services that are available in Switzerland are available to Americans basically anywhere they are. I see. That's a good thing. Good. And um, and so, how is it actually? How does it actually work? Like if I wanted to access it, what would what would my reason for using it be, and what would my result be? Okay, your reason for using it is because you let's say let's just say you want to do your homework, mm -hmm. and you want to see who's there, who's available, uh, what's the size of the company, you know, what's uh, what's their managing style, and so on and so forth. So if you take a look at the SEC registrations of these companies and their ABV part two brochure, they describe all these points. They describe strategies, type of clients, fees, et cetera, et cetera. So you can log on to the platform. It's at americanswelcome.swiss. You can visit, take a look at the listings of the Swiss SEC Research Investment Advisors. You can take a look at their background and so on. You can visit their websites, et cetera. And then you can just get in touch with them directly. Got it. So the reality, to me, it sounds kind of like a Dun and Bradstreet type of thing. Is that about, about right? Like to qualify this particular segment, sort of, and this way well, it becomes like a credibility factor. No, that I is don't very qualify them. I don't qualify them. I just list them. And it basically, it's like you said, it builds a bridge between U.S. clients, Canadian clients, that are interested in diversifying their investment portfolios mm -hmm. uh, by adding, you know, jurisdictional diversification, holding assets in Switzerland, uh, international investment strategies, et cetera, et cetera. And the SEC, you know, registered investment advisors that provide those services to these clients. So it's, it's really, it's easy. It's an easy concept. You just go to the platform, you take a look at who you want to look at. If you're interested, you get in contact with them directly. There's no filters. I don't collect email addresses or anything like that. It's really just a direct, you know, a, a direct thing. What I do do though, if somebody would like, I'm happy to make personal introductions. Mm -hmm. And often that happens with, for example, if you have a US advisor, a US um, a wealth advisor, financial advisor, and they're not that well versed in international diversification. They don't really know that much about what does it mean to hold a portion of your assets in Switzerland, how to go about it, how to do it. And uh, I get contacted by them actually quite a lot saying, oh, I didn't even know that this was possible. I didn't even know one could do that. Um, right. Well, how do I get started? How do I, how do I you know, advise my clients on that this is a possibility? And uh, I'm happy then to make introductions if, if, you know, if, 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 they, if they like that. Yeah, it sounds like something really worthwhile. And how, how is it monetized? Monetized? Yeah. Well, the, the, the companies that are listed on the platform, they, they pay a one-off flat fee, like an advertisement fee. Because it. it's a publication, basically. It's a directory. So right. I don't have any commission agreements. I don't have any sponsors. Uh, everything is self-financed. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not obliged to show any preference for any other mm. company or anything like that. And I don't, it's completely neutral. Mm -hmm. That's just like Switzerland is supposed to be, yeah. right? <laughs> you could say that. <laughs>
What's uh, what's one of the tips that you would give to people that are thinking about investing in other countries or creating a portfolio or a portion of their portfolio outside of their home country? Well, first of all, you should do your homework. I mean, you, you have to feel comfortable with what you're doing and um, you should take a look at more than one. You know, there's several there. Take a look, have, you know, have them make a personal proposal without right. any obligation, which they're happy to do, and then make a decision. I think, though, if you're investing abroad, it should be, um, let's say, a little bit more of a long term decision. It's not something that you just go in, do some trading and go out again. You right. don't need to do that with holding assets in Switzerland. If you're holding assets in Switzerland, a lot of times it has to do with wealth preservation. Uh, with having um, a, a nest egg outside of the US or Canadian uh, banking system and so on. So it's not really all that terribly exciting. <laughs> right. You know? But of course, if you're more growth oriented and more aggressive, you can have a strategy that, that is you know, according to your, your risk profile, of, of course. course. Well, your risk profile is a big deal. Um, what's one of the Tell me like one example of a client's challenge that could have been circumvented had they had the right guidance. Okay, um, I think for a US uh, advisor, they are usually rather US centric. Mm. And yes, they have that's a home true. <laughs> bias. Yeah, and they have a home bias. And it's sometimes a little bit difficult for them to grasp the idea of that it's okay to hold assets abroad, that it's okay to have an account in Switzerland and have some internationally diversified strategy there, that you don't have to think you're doing something that's not correct or unpatriotic right. or right. something like that. That's not true. So I think the, the best advice is just be open-minded and take a look at it. Um, ask all the questions that you would have ever and ever. Um, I even suggest that you, that they, um, involve their their advisor they have at home so that that advisor at home is also aware of what you want to do and of what the investments are then way that way you know that it's all you know it's it's all according to how you want to have it right and also all transparent so that everybody all, all of the parties know what's going on with all exactly. the other parties yeah it makes it easier I think if the, everybody kind of works together how easy is it to get established in Switzerland uh, if you want to do this, for example, if you want to invest in a port part of portion of your portfolio? It's very easy. Um, you don't have to come to Switzerland to do it. You can do it from the comfort of your home. The Swiss SEC Registered Investment Advisor of Choice will monitor the whole process of opening up the bank account at, the, at a Swiss bank. Um, and once that's in place, once that uh, account opening uh, process is done, of course, it has to do with know your client, it has to do with mm -hmm. uh, anti-money laundering right. and so on. And once that process is done, the, the, the account is there, it is invested in the strategy that you've chosen um, with your wealth manager, and it's done. I think the whole process takes about two months. Mm, not bad, not yeah. bad. So, and how many SEC, SEC registered advisors are in Switzerland? Uh, at the moment, there's around 50. That, so you have all of them on your portal? Yes. Uh, yeah. And at the moment, there's around 50. And I know personally of uh, five or six that want to get registered with the SEC this year. Mm. Is it a hard process to get registered? No, actually it's not. Uh, the registration can also can be done online. Uh, you need to have, of course, the paperwork that's required, you know, like your code of ethics, your ADV part two brochure and things like that, that you have to put together while you do it. Uh, there as well, you, you um, submit your registration and the SEC will approve it uh, within the first, I think, two, maybe even three months ago sometimes. And uh, then you're actually ready, ready for business. Wow. It's pretty interesting. Like the... Uh, I'm sure you've heard about people using the, their their IRA money, their Roth IRA money yeah. to invest in real estate. But yeah. here's another avenue as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah. With a self -directed I think it's all, RIA, always a matter of education. You know, yeah. well, with a self-directed RIA, you can. And right. the funny thing is there are, um, I think, two Swiss SEC registered investment advisors that are specialized, actually, in working with RIAs. Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, like you said, it's all about, well, I didn't know about that. I mean, it's like the, my, 
my signature program is how to immigrate through real estate. And mm -hmm. a lot of lawyers say, well, you can't do that. They tell their mm -hmm. clients, you can't use real estate to immigrate. Well, you can, but not if you're buying single family homes, you have to go work with somebody that knows the model that can get the visa that will get yeah. you the, the result that you want. So- Well, I think now uh, with the, the pandemic going on, there has been a rise in um, people in the US who are considering a second residency or a second citizenship. Uh, I heard a figure that the inquiries are up 235% over yeah. last year right. and so on and so forth. So I think uh, maybe this pandemic was also a bit of a wake up call oh, to sure. say, don't necessarily have to be completely US centric, that you can, you know, cross borders, like you say, right. exactly. and have other homes and, and have other investments and have um, uh, another focus. And not just for yourself, but also for the next generation. Right, you have to be forward thinking. And I think that one of the things that, that becomes very apparent when working with high net worth individuals, you know, you're working kind of indirectly, I'm mm -hmm. working generally directly, mm -hmm. is that they money, the key with money, what money buys is options. Yeah, exactly. Options. Mm -hmm. And that's why having a second or a third potential location, like Portugal is a very popular destination now. Yeah. They have the golden visa. It's a big deal and it's mm -hmm. very safe. And they've also handled COVID very well, better than the US. So mm -hmm. Americans um, are, are frustrated, Canadians too, and they want options. And so I think that that's what this brings to the table is the ability to get access to those options. Now, do you often work with people that are, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming not as often, but work with people that are inbound to, or like coming out of Europe or hear, hear of people that are coming out of Europe into the US or Canada or looking to expand their portfolio out, outside of Europe? Yes, well, uh, there's a section on the platform. It's called Becoming a U.S. Person. Because when you become a U.S. person, uh, of course, you get then, um, you're subject to U.S. tax regime. Mm -hmm. And if you have international holdings um, already in place, of course, and you go to the States and you haven't uh, prepared things properly, you can end up with onerous tax situation, you know, like PFIC taxes and things like that, which can be, avoided if you right. plan properly in advance. So the there are Swiss SEC registered investment advisors as well that are also specialized in doing exactly that. So for people that are inbound to the US, it just makes sense to take a good look at their portfolios uh, in advance before becoming a US person. It's interesting because I'm hoping to work with a um, Swiss tech company that's doing exactly that. They're inbound to the US not just investing, but also expanding their business. And so they have to look at all of the, you know, do they need an immigration visa? What are the legal ramifications? What type of entity do they need? How do they structure that? What's the best way to ensure that they don't end up being a US person when they're here, if that's mm -hmm. their goal? And mm -hmm. do you need asset protection guidance, you need cross-border tax guidance. So all of these pieces, I see you smiling because you're, uh, you're, yeah, uh, yeah. you're like yeah that's right and all of these pieces you know i uh, originally my my business was focused on inbound to the us and canada because i'm licensed in both mm -hmm. but through this pandemic i i now have clients that are investing in spain in honduras mm -hmm. in italy in um mexico many 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 are investing in mexico it seems to be a very popular destination the whole cabo area and all of that the um, the Anglo parts of Mexico, lots of people investing in various parts of South America. And mm -hmm. so, so I shifted and started developing a, pra a, a practice or a model focused on outbound from North America, what is, yeah. or, or I guess Mexico is North America, outbound from Canada and the US and mainly outbound from the US. And how does that mm -hmm. look? And what kind of structure do you need? Because you still need that structure. And I think that for people that are investing or creating a, developing a portion of their portfolio in Switzerland, they should probably have the guidance of an asset protection lawyer over here in the US as well before they do so to make sure that they are 
make, not compromising their assets here, not just with a financial advisor, but also there's, you know, there's a difference. Oh, yeah. There's, financial yeah, there's advisor. many aspects, yes. Right. And you especially know, in the United, especially in the United yeah. States where so many people um, have trusts, you know, so all kinds many, of right, trusts. Right, right, right. Uh, there, in Switzerland, there is no trust law. There's no such thing as a Swiss trust, except that the Swiss government has now um, accepted that we are going to have a Swiss trust law. And they're working on the laws, on the paragraphs as we speak, basically. And next year, uh, there will be a Swiss trust possibility, putting it at the same like playing level as other countries that do have a trust law. Interesting. Yeah. Well, things are changing, that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> and how do people reach you to find out more about investing in, in Switzerland and creating that portfolio and accessing your directory, please? Well, the easiest way is just to visit the platforms. And like I said, the address is americanswelcome.swiss and americanswelcome-expats.swiss. Okay. Uh, why .swiss? I mean, .ch is actually the abbreviation for Switzerland, but that means Confederatio Helvetica. And the people around the world, they don't understand that CH should mean Switzerland. And I've had so many people ask me, uh, well, why do you have a website in China? Okay, because it's .ch. And I had to, I changed that because um, the Swiss government made it possible to apply for the abbreviation .swiss. And um, I applied for that. And uh, they, of course, had to test everything, look at everything, make sure everything was fine. And then I was given the dot Swiss. So it's Americans welcome dot Swiss. <laughs> Interesting. And also, which I don't know if you know, but there's this brand new app, well, not brand new, but new app called Clubhouse. Oh, so I know. CH would be Clubhouse. And it's very popular internationally. Yes, yes, I know. And lots of people <laughs> are buying sites dot club. So yeah. I would now I would think for you know that's going to be even more confusing. So it's good that you have dot Swiss. Yeah, I think so, so as well. It's it's self-explanatory when you see the Swiss at the end of it. Of course, <laughs> of course, it is confusing sometimes. Uh, these these abbreviations. You know, Canada's easy. The U.S. well dot com, I guess. But anyway, yeah. um, and it's really a pleasure to have you. I'm very glad we finally had a chance to do this, yeah. and I think we have a lot to explore together. Um, I agree. So I, I definitely do. And um, I really do appreciate your time in joining us today. The show will be live soon. It will be on YouTube right away. I will of course tag you and we will have an opportunity to develop something together. Thank you so Wonderful. much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. This is Lauren Cohen signing off from Investing Across Borders where we teach you how to invest, live, work, and play across borders, just like Anne Liebgott has managed to do from Canada to the US, over to Europe, and making an impact all over the world. Thank you so much for your time. Lauren Cohen, international legal and real estate expert, looking forward to working with you to help you create a strategy to invest across borders. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lauren.